but, but welcome. He's a uh, um, uh, US-based yeah, medical uh, doctor, Dr. Wolfgang, and we have some few questions we will be asking. So um, remember less and God bless each and every one. Thank you. So. Uh, so thank you for having us once again uh, in this session. Well, uh, the question I have with me here is um, now due to the rate of trauma uh, that is happening among our youths in this current generation, how can we help the traumatized? Well, um, <clears throat> basically, um, how, how to help someone that's traumatized and, and uh, I guess I'd like to start out by saying thank you for having me here uh, to discuss these uh, important issues with you. And uh, we just ask that, that God blesses this time and uh, it gives us uh, an opportunity to show his way. Um, and I think it's important to realize that, first of all, that, that God does understand our trauma and our pains Isaiah 53, 3 says, He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, and acquainted with grief. And we hid it, hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. So God understands not only the trauma, but also uh, understands how, how, we, um, you know, how we esteem him not, how we don't really understand. Um, and dealing with traumatized people, probably one of the biggest, biggest medicines that we have is um, thinking of time. Um, Matthew 5, 4 says, Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Um, does that happen immediately? Uh, some, for some people, there is an immediate uh, 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 response from God, but sometimes God uses time to heal people. And, um, you know, I, I think of Job and his friends, and uh, I think where they fell short was that there was a time of allowing him to mourn, um, but then I think they, they pressed things too quickly and didn't allow him time to heal and time to work things I, through. I want to be How that works as far as um, in church things. Um, sometimes there are, uh, when someone is traumatized, they act out. And, and they act out with anger. Uh, sometimes they'll act out in different ways. Matthew 5, 4 said, Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. So, um, sometimes what's missing there is a tincture of time. And, and sometimes I've seen in church situations where people say there's unforgiveness. Um, and uh, I, I think I've, I've talked about this issue before, is that sometimes when there's a major trauma, um, you know, the response of some is, is acting out and uh, just giving people time, uh, even if they act in, in ways that we don't find very, very nice. Um, and that may be a testing of the patient or the client or the, the brother or sister. Uh, they're testing you if they act out and if you leave and, and um, uh, then, then we failed. Uh, but being with that, those people uh, and through their, their valleys, um, I think that's, that's kind of the proof of um, faithfulness. So I hope that answers that question. But um, All right. Thank you. Thank you very much for that answer. Now, please, still with this. Now, what is the therapy that will be best for the traumatized? The best therapy for traumatized uh, people? Um, there's a book out by a man, a doctor named Jay Adams. It's Competent to Counsel, an introdu introduction to newsthetic counseling. There's two different, um, or there's at least a couple different major forms of, of counseling. Uh, one of them is uh, the mainstream type thing, uh, is called a um, uh, humanistic counseling, uh, where you try and just let people work through things, uh, find their own truth. And then there's also this thing called newthetic counseling. 
And that word was used uh, actually in the New Testament by Paul. And it's uh, basically the translation of that is, is to admonish, correct, or instruct. Romans 15, 14 says, I myself am convinced, my brothers and sisters, that you yourselves are full of goodness, filled with knowledge and competent to instruct or counsel. Basically, if, if we're followers of the word then, and, and we're faithful in that, then we are competent to counsel and to um, reach out to our brothers and sisters. In modern times, um, in, many, um, in many places, at least, and I'm speaking mainly here in America, and I'm not sure how it is in Africa, uh, there's this uh, tendency to try and, and seek out the, um, the professionals. But the Bible tells us that um, we are competent to counsel, and um, studies have, have, are starting to come in right now that show that a friend that's good, that listens and spends time with the traumatized person is uh, just as competent and has just as good outcomes as a professional, professional counselor. So what makes a competent counselor? 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17 says, All scripture is breathed out, of, out by God and useful for teaching, for conviction, for correction, and for disciplined training in righteousness in order to fit and fully equip the man of God for every good task. And Acts 20, 31 says, Therefore be alert, remembering that for three years, day and night, I, couldn't, I didn't stop counseling each one of you with fears. So that tells us there's, there's a couple of important concepts um, and, and components to being a competent counselor, uh, even as a lay counselor. counselor. And one of them is knowledge. Um, so, uh, and that goes in the Romans, the Romans verse, filled with knowledge and competent to instruct and counsel one another. So we need to know the scriptures and we need to know, um, and that's really important, uh, because uh, people can bring in things, and we need to recognize, is this of God or is this of the devil? Is this of uh, man? Um, and so we need to know that the scriptures. We need to have, be able to, to deal with things and bear one another's burdens, be able to, to, to shed some tears with them. And I didn't stop counseling each one of you with tears, Paul said uh, in Acts 20. Uh, we need to be prepared to struggle along with your brother and sister and give grace. Um, and so uh, the knowledge is the truth, the tears is the grace. And we need to have a, a, a proper balance between that. If you have all truth, you have someone that's uh, very hard and say, this, isn't, this is scriptural, this isn't scriptural, but they don't, you don't have the heart of the person that you're, you're trying to, to help with the trauma. On the other end of the spectrum, you have uh, someone that's all tears. If someone is just all tears, and uh, that's, that lends itself to compromise and, and distorts and destroys and twists the truth. So to be competent, you have to have a proper balance between truth and grace. And uh, the other thing I think to, to properly uh, be a good counselor and in, in dealing with things like depression is being beyond reproach, accountability, in other words. It would be inappropriate for uh, uh, a man to be counseling a woman in private. Um, the Bible does call us to be accountable and to, um, and, and to be beyond reproach. So oftentimes I, I think dealing with things as a team uh, would be very, a uh, very important thing to do. And, and again, contrast this with humanistic counseling. It's based on the assumption that uh, individuals already uh, possess an inner truth, uh, your truth, my truth, uh, that kind of things. It's, it's all, another name for this is called client-centered therapy. Uh, and it goes wherever the patient or the client wants it to go. And, and oftentimes that'll go in some very dark places and places that are away from God. So we need to be anchored in truth and grace.